To find more information on this model and to learn more about the O-Gauge hobby, check out the O-Gauge Railroading's new YouTube channel in the description below and make sure to visit them on the web at ogagerr.com. Well, I did it. I never really thought I'd be getting a big boy because I like modern diesels and I just never really saw myself owning one. I liked seeing them on videos, I saw other people's reviews. It's a good engine, but I never thought I'd get one. And then we got one at the Lionel store in Nashville and I couldn't help myself. They're a beautiful engine. And there's a lot of features being a Vision Line engine, so this review is going to be very intricate and probably very long. So, I would recommend if you want to watch this whole review, which I recommend you should, go ahead and get comfortable. Maybe grab a drink or a snack because we're going to get right into my review on the Vision Line Big Boy. Brand new here in 2023. For starters, the box is very cool. Obviously, you get the Vision Line box that you typically do with any Vision Line engine you get. It's also very reflective. Hi there, you can see me in the background. Now, let's actually open the box and let's show you what's inside. Alright, here you go. This box lifts up just like this. Very snug fit. The first thing you'll see is your instruction manual. I highly recommend you look through this. Even though I may give you almost every detail and I may miss a couple things in the review, you should always read your owner's manual, but especially on a Vision Line engine. Anyways, now it reveals the Vision Line logo with the Lionel logo on the top of the styrofoam. Let's go ahead and pull that off. And here you have it your Vision Line Big Boy. Mm, and while you're at it, go ahead and uh, waft in that nice aroma of new train. People talk about it all the time. It is a real thing and uh, quite the nice smell. Anyways, let's get the tinder out first. Typically this plastic will be wrapped over it, however, it's already been removed once, so don't mind that. Check it out carefully, just like that. And set it to the side. And you will definitely want to use two hands for this because the big boy is very very heavy, but very carefully, just lift up like that, and there you go. Also included in the box is the side rod removal tool, so when you want to do traction tires, you can take the side rods off yourself. That fits very snugly right there. Included are some traction tires, as well as a dummy O-scale couple that can be put on the front. And then you'll get another little bag of goodies, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So now we have unboxed the big boy, and oh my goodness, it is massive! Getting it on my table, if you watched my last review of the Blue Goose Northern, you can visibly see the difference just sitting here on my table, just how large this engine is. I guess they really don't call it the big boy for nothing. The exact length of this engine is 32 inches, almost 3 feet long. It's kind of insane when you think about it. The minimum curve is also 072. Now, of course, it being a Vision Line engine, it comes with a lot of different features and a lot of cool features, and we'll get into that in just a second. First, as always, if you want to follow me, if you want to stay updated on what trains I'm getting, or if you want to see what's new on the channel, go to the description below. I've got a Discord server, I've got an Instagram, I have almost every social media you can think of. So make sure you go follow me, that'll be the best way to stay updated on things that are not just product reviews and layout updates. Now I hope you weren't hoping for a history lesson because I can't say I know every small detail about the 4014, nor do I know every single detail about the real life big boy. So I'm not going to go into too much history or too much about the actual thing because I just don't know that much. If you want to do that, there are a plethora of videos on YouTube and plenty of websites and plenty of people who know a lot more about this engine than I do. So for the majority of today, we're just going to focus on the model and the features that it presents. So just to clarify real quick, this is the 2023 
rerun of the Vision Line Big Boys with a lot more features than the last one. The last one was done about 2014, and it was pretty good. Eric Siegel did a very nice review on that one. I would highly recommend checking it out. And this one is very similar to those, but there's also some differences as well. Especially when it comes to the amount of features that are included and which ones are included on this engine. Lionel did many different variants of the big boy when they released it earlier this year in 2023. This one that you're looking at here is the 4014 coal-fired version. They also did a 4014 oil-fired version, which is basically the same except it doesn't have the depleting coal load in the tender. And it has this really cool plate I'm going to put a picture of right here that the real 4014 that runs today actually has. I think that was a very cool feature. Kudos to Lionel for getting that one right. There are a lot of different other road numbers including 4000, 4012, 4019. Some people did custom runs as well. I'm pretty sure there's a Greyhound and a hot dog scheme as well if that's your thing. But today we're just going to be looking at the 4014. Okay, so when you get your Vision Line big boy out of the box, the whistle piece will come separate, and that's because it needs to be taken off and put back on any time you package up the engine and transport it. You don't need to take it off anytime you use the engine, but when you put it back in the box, it's recommended that you do. There are four points of contact to put this whistle on. You can see one on the front there in the whistle, one in the middle, one on the rear for the magnet, and the little piece hanging off the end, which I'm pretty sure is the whistle pull cord, those all have a point of contact. So I'll show you. The front of the whistle goes in like that, and then the middle snaps on there, and then here in the back, the whistle pull cord has a very small hole. It's almost hard to see, but it fits in there just like that, and then the whistle snaps on just like that. And removing it is just as simple. I would recommend pulling it, the pull cord out first and then sort of wiggling it very carefully out just like this. And there you go. That's all there is to it. Okay, starting here at the front and bottom of the engine next to the cow catcher. This is where the O-scale coupler pops out and you can replace that for the included dummy O-scale coupler if you wanted to double head the engine. This pops very nicely back in there like that. The front of the engine looks very nice, especially the cow catcher. I love the detailing on it. You can see some piping here as well. And then this front is just really cool. I like the 4014 badge. That looks very nice. And just all the other small details here and around here just look very nice. This is a very beautiful front end. Taking a wider look at the front here, you can see that front end in its full glory. It looks very nice. The front of the boiler does open as well, but if you do open it, just be mindful of this bell up here. It can get in the way, so you just kind of have to work around it a little bit like so. But it does open up all the way like that and it reveals a very nicely detailed interior to the boiler. I don't think I've ever seen a boiler that detailed on the interior in my life. It also kind of disguises the smokiness behind it, and I think it looks very cool. And then obviously it just closes right back up, just like that. The bell on top does not swing, although it does have this little cord up here that does move if you were to touch it. There's also a hammer inside the bell as well if you look up from the bottom, making it look just like a real bell. Moving down the side of the engine, you can see the articulated points right here. When the engine moves like this, you can kind of see it move just like that. Those are what articulate the front of the boiler from the bottom trucks. You can also see more of this piping here that goes to the rear set of cylinders sort of up through here to the second smokestack. I think that looks very cool. That's a very nice detail in my opinion. The front drive gear here as well also looks very nice. There's this little piece right up here and I'm not sure if it's on the real big boy or not, but I don't think it was on the last run of big boys either and it looks very cool when it's in motion. I think that was a very nice touch by Lionel. The front cylinder here also looks very nice and all the other little details here as well, including the legible builder's plates it's just so very cool. You also have a grab iron right here, as well as a few more hose detailings on top and along the side. We also have lighted number boards on top and lighted marker lights here in the front. And for whatever reason, there is this movable bell cord again on the top. Maybe Lionel just decided that this was the time to add something that could actually make the bell move a little bit if he touched it. 
Either way, very cool. Here's a quick zoom in on the front of the boiler. You can kind of read those plates a little bit. You can't quite read them all the way, but you can get an idea of what they say. And doing this close up again just sort of gives you an idea of how many little details like these that I'm pointing out here went into this engine. There are just so many details that even looking at it up close, you find something new every time you look at it. Now something I can't demonstrate for you today, but I can put a picture of it right here, is the smoke dome. Lionel did include one with every single big boy, I just don't have it right now to display. It looks very cool when it's on there. And you can also see the whistle cord and the hole that it goes into over here on the left. Now while we're up here, this would be a great time to talk about the four smoke units that this engine has. Yes, you heard me correct. This engine has four smoke units and two of them are up here. One is controlled through here and one is controlled through here. The front smoke unit that you pour smoke fluid down this hole for is controlling the main smokestacks. The second smoke unit down here, which you'll pour smoke fluid down this hole for, is controlling the whistle steam. And the whistle steam on this engine is very good. You'll see why it deserves its own smoke unit in just a bit. But to confirm, you put smoke fluid in both holes when you're adding smoke fluid. And again, Lionel typically recommends you put 10 to 20 drops of smoke fluid. Just remember, don't oversaturate it and don't let it run dry. Moving down the side of the engine, once again, there's so much great detailing here. I don't know what to talk about first. You can still see the grab irons here going back along with the walkway along the side. Right here, you can see a legible thing that says hydro test, 210 pounds on this cylinder right here. And then here are the rear set cylinders with those pipings going up to the front for the second smokestack. You can also see more rivet detailing as well as a couple more pipes along here on the side. You can also start to see the pop-off valves up here and the hole for the smoke unit, but we'll get to that a little bit more in detail in just a second. The wheel detailing is very nice. I like the cutouts on the wheels. The darkened side rods on this engine also are a very nice touch. It sort of gives the engine a not as brand new look to it, and I like that. And then finally, there's a few more details right here, a few more pipes going along this way, and again, just every little thing that makes this engine what it is. Moving further down the side, you can see those pipes that started over here continue all the way over here with even more piping over here. You can see some very nice rivet detailing here on the firebox with little hoses coming down here. You can see these painted wheels right here, they look very nice. And then there is the hole for the blowdown smoke effect. We'll see that coming later on. There's also the 4014 number right here with the numbers that read 4884 and then a few more things right here that are probably big boy specific that I just don't know exactly what they mean but it's very cool that Lionel added them anyways and then like I said more detailing right here on the side rods and even into the inside of the engine right there here we are on top of the locomotive and right here you can see the two holes for the pop-off valve smoke effect those can sometimes get plugged up by smoke Sometimes you may have to blow down the holes or take a pipette to get any smoke fluid uh, that is bubbling up to stop bubbling up and go down into the system. It doesn't happen that often, but it might happen occasionally, so if you only get smoke out of one hole, that's probably why. There's also a nice valve right here, and then this cover right here pops off. It takes a second sometimes, but it reveals a lot of stuff down here. There's a ton to unpack. You have six switches right here, as well as two holes in the back right there. These two holes right here are for the pop-off valve smoke effect and the blowdown smoke effect. When you load your smoke fluid for that, it will be the pop-off valve smoke effect here and the blowdown smoke effect here. You just pour the smoke fluid directly down those holes again. In terms of switches, you have the run and program switch up here at the top. Behind that, you have the Bluetooth on and off. Behind that one, you have the main smoke on and off. Then you have the whistle steam smoke on and off. Then you have the pop-off smoke on and off. And finally, the blowdown smoke on and off. Here we are at the back of the locomotive. First off, up here, there is a roof hatch. Now, this is kind of difficult to open. You do have to kind of pop it open like that. It is not really spring-loaded or just where you pull it on and up. You kind of have to give it a little bit of a pull, but 
it's fine. It's designed to do that, and then it actually snaps down in place, which is pretty solid. You also have some nice curtain detailing right here, and then this walk plate, which underneath it you can see there are, again, more very cool valve piping over here, and on the other side right here. Below it you can see the drawbar as well as the IR sensor, and this walk plate here, when on the tender, looks very good. The engine and tender are kept very close together. Let's take a deeper look inside the cab. You can see some very nice painted valve detailing right there. The smoke box lights up when the engine is in motion and on. And if I shine a flashlight up in here, you can see even more painted valves and dials up there. It's a very cool interior that honestly, you don't see that much. This is barely with any light. I actually have to shine my phone flashlight in here to be able to pick up those details. But it's very cool that Lionel did that still. And if we take a look at this side, we can even see that the engineer has his own throttle handle over there on that side. How cool is that? Once again, this is what makes a Vision Line engine a Vision Line engine. It's just so many cool details that you don't get to see that often on an O-Gage engine. This one definitely tops the Blue Goose interior that I reviewed recently. Very, very nicely detailed. And now let's take a look at the tender. This is a very nicely detailed tender and obviously it being a big boy tender has a ton of wheels on the bottom. It also has a pair of sprung front trucks which is very nice. You can even push on it a little bit and you can feel it spring up and down. Speaking of push on, this coal load up here, while maybe not looking the most realistic, is the depleting coal load so it is made of a foam. So you'll touch that, you'll look at it, and it may not look that realistic, but it'll look very cool when I show you the depleting coal load feature. Anyways, taking a deeper look into the tender, you can see some grab irons here, you can see some more detailing over here on the left, and then these doors, all four, open individually, which is very cool. Not something that Lionel does very often. It's kind of hard to see because of my fingers, but it's very cool. This is the IR receiver down here for the sound, and then there's a little tube right here that on the real big boy, I'm pretty sure would feed coal and water into the engine, but obviously doesn't do that on the model because it's not actually coal fired. Taking a look at the back of the tender, you can see we have some marker lights up here, as well as a light up here, and a directional LED light right here. We also have a nice coupler cut bar right down here that does move, as well as some rivet detailing on the back and some grab irons on the side as well. And we also have an electric coupler back here, but one of the cool things about this coupler is it is a force coupler. If you don't know what that means, it means as the engine pulls the train behind it, it will detect the load that it is pulling and sort of reflect that in how the engine acts. And the force coupler is also very sensitive as well. It can detect going up or down a grade. It can also even detect going on a straight or a curved section of track. Based on the load that it is pulling, it will change the chuffing of the locomotive, which just sounds really cool because your locomotive will sound like it's chuffing differently like it would in the real world when you don't really have to do anything to it and it'll just go around your layout acting like it would if it was a real steam engine, which is very cool. If a spike is also detected in speed, either going slow or speeding up, you will also hear a clang of all the couplers letting out or cutting some slack. Uh, the manual describes it as a crunch, but if you've ever gone rail fanning and you've seen a stop train start moving and you hear all the couplers cut out slack, that is what the sound sounds like, and it's very cool that Lionel did that on this engine. The force coupler can also detect movement if the engine is not moving. For instance, if something were to be coupled up to it, or if another engine were to couple up to it, it would also create a loud bang, as if the couplers were closing. Again, just a very cool feature that Lionel didn't have to add, but they did, and it makes the engine just that little bit more fun. And once again, here is a look at the side of the tender. You can again see some nice rivet detailing all along the sides, and you can see all of the wheel sets on the bottom. One last feature that only applies to the coal-fired engines is under this hatch, there's a coal load off and on switch, and you can just close it up just like that. You also have these other two hatches here, but again, they just open up to reveal nothing underneath. 
but that one in the middle is where you can turn the cold depletion effect on or off. Okay, we're just about ready to start the engine up and get into all the features that it has. But before we do that, I just wanted to show you really quick what this looks like with that drop plate in there. And I think it looks very nice. It's a relatively close distance. This also sort of pulls out a little bit here and there. But as it stands right there, that's a very nice distance. Maybe a little bit long if you're going for realistic looks. But I still think it looks very good for no scale model. Okay, so before we start the engine up, there's a few more things I want to discuss. A couple more features that I may or may not be able to show. One of them is the drift chuff feature. And that is because an articulated steam locomotive's wheel drive can drift in and out of sync with each other sometimes. And this engine can replicate that. Just like the rate of cold depletion in the tender, the amount and the timing of this drift is determined by the labor of the locomotive. Which can be determined by the, your input on the cab 2 or the force coupler. There's also a wheel slip feature which we will try to do when we first start up the locomotive. And then we'll also check out the depleting coal load feature. Okay, with all that being said, let's finally give this beast an extended startup sequence. Terminal Brickman, UP 4014. We have good initial terminal brake test on timetable train number one. Over. That's a Roger. 4014 has good initial terminal brake test on timetable train number one. Out. And there you go. This engine has started up. I love that whine of the dynamo. It's so cool. There's also multiple speakers on this engine, which is super cool. You get sounds from the engine and the tinder. It just sounds that much better. Okay, so for just a moment, I've turned off the main stack smoke and the pop-off smoke. That way you can see and hear the whistle steam smoke effect to the best ability. Let's go ahead and give a listen to all the whistles and all the bells. This thing puts out an enormous amount of smoke. Let's go ahead and listen to the second whistle. That one is probably my favorite whistle because, in my opinion, I think that one is closest to the real 4014 whistle. I also want to point out a side note, I like how the whistle steam smoke goes in multiple directions and makes it look like it's blowing out of the whistle. Lionel's doing that on a couple of engines like the L1 Mikado and it looks very, very nice. Anyways, let's continue. Here is the bell tones. And one final time, because we can, let's zoom in on that whistle steam smoke effect. Let's go ahead and 
listen to some of the crew talk. 4014 to Aga, ready to make our pull. Can we get permission to occupy the main? Please hold at your location. Out. My coal full. Out. Engine 4014 to the tower. Ready to roll. Can I pull? You can take the green. Out. Here is the blowdown steam effect, which again puts out a lot of smoke. Okay, now let's check out the pop-off steam. It will happen automatically whenever you are operating the engine or it is just stopped for a short period of time. It is running on a program timer. However, you can also access it from the Cab 2 remote by pressing the AUX 3 button if you have that updated right here. And there it goes, just like that. Here's the sound of water filling up the tender. My water tank's full. Out. While the engine does deplete the coal load as you go along the rails, there is a demonstration mode. And I will do that by pressing and holding the brake button down here on the line I'll let you And now I will fill the coal load by pressing the zero key on the cab to remote. And there we go, now it's all full. Here's a quick demonstration of that force coupler thing. I'm gonna couple up these cars and you'll hear the force coupler sound. Very, very cool. Okay, we're going to take the engine out for a spin now, but before we're going to do that, we're going to do the wheel slip feature. What I'm going to do is, on my cab 2, I'm going to fully apply the train brake, and then I will set my throttle speed where I want it, and then I will release the train brake, which will then give us our wheel slip, and we will continue on our journey. Yes, sir. All clear ahead. 
one last time, so look at that drive gear. And there you have it. There is my review of Lionel's latest rendition of the 4014 Big Boy. These engines are absolute units, and I have quite frankly fallen in love with them, and I see why everyone else does too. I will be getting this engine, the coal-fired 4014, as well as the current oil-fired 4014. But I definitely want one of these or two because they're just so cool. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this review. I'm Sam, and I'll see you guys in the next one.